trying to get motivated sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Welcome to video number four in my series about motivation and we're gonna bring it home with three more things that might be going on for you that show that it's not you're unmotivated. It's just, well, let's dive into the video and find out what else it could be. Hey everyone, if you don't know me by now, my name is Gretchen Wegner. I am the creator of the Anti-Boring Learning Lab where educators obsess about the science-backed study strategies and the executive function skills that every student needs to thrive. And I am really excited to bring home this series on motivation with three more things that it could be instead of a lack of motivation if you are feeling like you just can't do whatever it is you need to do to be successful at school. Now, before I fully, fully dive into these last three things, I do want to say that I have a very special gift for educators that's over at my website, antiboringlearninglab.com uh, slash library. And that is where I've consolidated all 11 of these things on one piece of paper that you can use to show students to help them self-identify where their motivational struggles are. I call it the motivation checklist. Go get it. I'm always adding more things to my online free library. And so um, I just wanna support you in having awesome relationships that help students feel like they're thriving. But now, students, let's look at three additional things that could be going on. The first thing is that your identity needs a reframe. What do I mean by that? Identity reframe. <laughs> you like my little picture there of this person who's thinking about who they are? Um, the first thing is I want you to take a good hard look at your beliefs about yourself. You might be believing something that is an unmotivating thought that is not going to help you take action on the thing that needs taking action on. So an example about that is here on these other two things. You might believe I am a person who always procrastinates or you might choose to be I am a person who does things quickly or I am a person who doesn't procrastinate. This also is about knowing what I like to call your why. I am a person who cares about becoming a doctor or a teacher or a whatever, if you know what you want to be. Or I know that I want to create as much freedom for myself and my future as possible. And that is my big why, creating freedom for myself. I recently was told by one of the educators in my anti-boring learning lab that she has a student who actually puts post-its up that remind herself why she does what she does. And she actually is somebody who's motivated by the negative statement, so I'm a person who doesn't procrastinate, she puts on her post-it. And that identity reframe helps her take action when she doesn't wanna take action. So I really should be putting a post-it up around my house that says I am a person who exercises regular, regularly whether I want to or not, right? Because that is uh, a better identity than I am a person who always chooses to watch TV instead of go work out. <laughs> Are you learning a little something about me right now? Okay, so that was the first thing. I just hit my desk so it bounced, so let me say that again. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing that I have noticed is that many people and many students particularly have compromised self-care. That's my attempt to draw a burger up there. Maybe you're not sleeping well. That's what subpar means. Or maybe you don't go to sleep in time. Maybe you're doing too much stuff on your phone. Maybe you don't turn your phone off and so you're being pinged all night by all those group text chains. Speaking of exercise, maybe you aren't exercising as much as your body needs for you to do all of the heavy brain power that you're doing in your life. Or maybe your nutrition is poor. 
Believe it or not, all of those things can affect our motivation. When we're too tired, we just don't feel like doing anything. When we don't have the right nutrition in our bodies, it actually makes us feel draggy and we don't want to take action. So sometimes what feels like a lack of motivation is just one of these self-care items. I remember actually a student I worked with who was so unmotivated in their third period class and come to find out that he needed a snack. And then once he started bringing a snack to get himself through the rest of the morning before lunch, it transformed his ability to pay attention and feel like he cared about being in that class. It's amazing what good nutrition, good sleep, and good exercise can do for us. Ah, the last thing, the third thing in this video, and the 11th thing on my motivation checklist is sometimes we have mismatched rewards. That is my attempt up there to draw a, a an award, you know, <laughs> that you would that you would wear. Um, rewards are a tricky subject in motivation theory because it really is true from a brain-based perspective that the more rewards we have, the more dopamine is released in our brain, the more we want to take action. But we need to be smart about how we use rewards. So you're not going to feel motivated if there's literally no incentive for you to do any, the thing that you need to do. Or if the incentive is too big or, I mean, I mean blah, too small for the tasks. Like, well, that's not worth working for. And so you won't work for it. Another problem that I have seen is some parents or teachers over rely on external rewards and students are so used to doing that external reward thing they don't develop an internal sense that this is important for me that I want to do this and finally I have seen some school environments and some parenting situations where there is an over reliance on consequences and so not as many incentives but too many consequences and boy, that can actually be a demotivator for students as well. So my big tip for you students, before I end this whole series by talking directly to the educators, my last tip for you. Okay, hold on. I gotta remember. Oh yeah. My last tip for you is rather than relying on the people in your world, your parents, your teachers, your coaches, to provide rewards for you, think about how you can be in charge of rewards for yourself. What is something that helps you get started on a task that feels like a little reward? You could say, if I just get started with blah, 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 then I will be able to eat these M&Ms that I put on my desk, <laughs> you know, but you got to get started before you eat an M&M, just as an example. Or, uh, I mean, there are just so many ways you can work with rewards in your own systems. Another favorite one of mine is to ask the people in your household uh, who have money and power, so your parents or other caregivers, to purchase this thing that you want but don't need, and then to have it be in a box in the closet somewhere and to know that when you accomplish X, Y, and Z, you get to open that box. That's an example of you being in charge of the rewards rather than you just being a passive recipient of whatever rewards and or consequences the adults in your life want to pass out to you. But being smart about rewards, don't wait too long to give yourself the reward because that's demotivating. But don't also give yourself so many rewards that you don't actually work for it. So it's, it's a dance. It's an experiment. And often one thing we do as academic coaches when we're working with clients is we support you in the experimenting and the noticing for what you need in order to be able to take action. <sighs> okay, if you have sat through this whole series, you are amazing, by the way. Uh, and I would love to hear any reflections, like what is the most important thing you learned about 
Is it a lack of motivation or is it actually one of these 11 things? If you would like to see the complete list, again, please go pick that up at GretchenWagner.com slash library and that's where you'll see the motivation checklist posted as a free resource for you. Students, you can go grab it for yourself as well, but it's really designed for educators to use as a tool when you are working directly with students. I would love to answer any questions you have. Please post them below. And mostly, I just from my heart to yours want to say if you are not feeling motivated, nothing is wrong with you. It's just that you haven't figured out what that one little thing is that's going to get you going, but it's possible to figure out, and I know you can do it. Take good care, everyone. Bye-bye.